2000 was a crazy year. People thought that the Y2K bug was going to destroy everything. The song 1999 officially became obsolete and seemingly everyone forgot about Dre. And on top of that, the company known as World Championship Wrestling was just months away from closing its doors only to be bought by the World Wrestling Federation. Now this was supposed to be a monumentous occasion and even though some good did come from it, a lot of people will tell you that WCW being bought by WWF was very anticlimactic. Now that does beg the question. Fortunately, that's the subject of this episode because today, Dave knows what would happen if WWE never bought WCW. So let's lay out the groundwork. Let's talk about what really did happen before we start undoing it. Now many people will tell you one of the biggest reasons why WCW was sold in the first place was because its owner, Ted Turner, was joining forces and merging with AOL. Now rumor has it that America Online wasn't interested in having a professional wrestling company being associated with their new brand. So Ted Turner decided to sell it off. So under this hypothetical, I'm not trying to say that Ted Turner still wouldn't have sold WCW. But the concept of this video is what if Vince McMahon never bought WCW? Well, if he didn't, who would have? Well, we don't necessarily know that anyone would have. Well, the company could have just folded and that would have been the end of it. Period. Now, if that was the case, all of WCW's tape library would still be available. And also, other aspects of the company would be up for grabs as well, such as props, including championship title belts, and on top of that, all of the WCW's trademarks. That's right, the NWO, the Horsemen, their logos, characters, gimmicks, all would have been available and open to the public. Now, even if this happened, most likely somebody would have picked up these parts of the company, although that doesn't mean they necessarily would have bought all of them. Now, realistically speaking, even if WWF didn't purchase the company, they probably still would want to snag that up if they had the chance. But this video is all about if WWF didn't purchase WCW or any specific aspects of it either. But if it wasn't Vince McMahon, who would pick up their trademarks and gimmicks? Well, I'm sure if your Backyard Wrestling Federation had the money, you would love to own the rights to the character of Sting, wouldn't you? I know I would. Now remember, at this time, there was a lot less in the way of major wrestling companies. Without WCW, there was a huge void that eventually got filled by all the companies we see today. So this means there was no Global Force Wrestling, there was no Chikara, there was no TNA, and there was no Ring of Honor. However, there was still New Japan Pro Wrestling. NJPW did have a great relationship with the WCW, and on top of that, they even had their own version of the NWO. And we can tell from the Bullet Club right now that they still really love the concept of wrestling's new world order. And even though owning trademarks could be a huge financial investment, and NJPW showed no interest and buying WCW outright, it wouldn't change the fact that there's a good probability that they would buy the trademarks just to get the rights to the NWO if Vince McMahon didn't already beat them to it. So just think about it, Finn Balor, Carl Anderson, AJ Styles, they all could have been members of the NWO. Now you might have noticed I did leave one company off of that potential list, and that company of course is Extreme Championship Wrestling. Well, ECW was also having financial problems at that time, so they probably wouldn't be able to purchase anything. Well, the thing about it is Paul Heyman and Vince McMahon have always had a decent working relationship with each other, even when they were part of separate companies. And as the story goes, Vince McMahon was actually giving money to Paul Heyman and ECW to help keep them afloat. But there are plenty of reasons to suggest that the reason why this gravy train stopped in the first place was because WCW got purchased by the WWF. Now WCW wasn't officially under yet, but the signs were all there, and rumors speculating about Ted Turner's sale had already begun. Now this could just be a coincidence, but it does stand to reason that maybe Vince McMahon knew that one of his competitors was already out of the picture, so it was time to swoop in for the kill and get rid of the because before Spike TV was Spike TV, it was actually TNN, and it was the home of ECW. ECW got a national TV deal and things were looking up. And according to Paul Heyman, TNN used ECW just to test the waters to see if pro wrestling could ever make it on their network. Now even though it sounds like a good thing that ECW was getting more national exposure, it did mean that they had a lot more expenses to take into account. And as soon as the WWE moved in, it seemed that ECW had become forgotten. So without proper promotion, without a decent time slot, and without the backing of the very network that they were on, ECW had to fold because they couldn't keep up with all the mounting debt that they were accumulating just from being a nationally aired show. So now it is possible to think that if WWF didn't buy WCW and if WCW continued on in some venture, maybe ECW still would have been around too. That scenario is very unlikely, but the possibility is still there. But let's go back to that concept because if they didn't go out of business and were bought by somebody else and WCW was around, how would that happen? Well, I talked about what if someone bought the trademarks, but I didn't talk about what if someone else bought the entire company. Now, as the story goes, there were actually other people interested in buying the company, namely Eric Bischoff. 
And supposedly, Ted Turner was willing to sell to Bischoff, but at a much higher price than he was to Vince McMahon, which is interesting. And allegedly, Eric Bischoff did manage to cultivate some investors that was willing to help him purchase the company. But it has been said that some investors did pull out at the last minute, thus making it harder for Eric Bischoff to actually complete the sale, thus leaving Vince McMahon open to swoop right on in and seal the deal. However, if Eric Bischoff did buy WCW, there might be some changes as well, namely, WCW programming wouldn't air on TNT or TBS anymore. If Turner was looking to get rid of the company altogether, he'd probably want their shows off of his networks as well. Which means that Eric Bischoff not only would need to get the money to buy WCW, but he would also need to find a way to keep WCW on TV on a brand new network. Now unfortunately, being on a new network also means lower ratings, and lower ratings means less income. So even if Eric Bischoff did buy WCW, there still would be financial hardships. Maybe enough that the company would still go out of business anyway. Now all this is widely speculation, but the reality is there would not have been a WCW invasion angle, at least not at that time, and as far as I'm concerned, that would have been a good thing. Which means that wrestlers like DDP and Booker T never would have been around WWE in 2001 and 2002. Which means no WrestleMania 19 match between Triple H and Booker T, and no way to be disappointed by that ending. It also means no more DDP stalking The Undertaker's wife and begging him to make him famous. No more Stone Cold Steve Austin beating up Booker T in a supermarket! No Buff Bagel getting fired and disappearing from wrestling forever! You know, come to think about it, I'm beginning to think we would all be better off if WWF never bought WCW in the first place. And now these are just the guys that signed right away. Think about all the wrestlers that came after the fact once their contracts were up. We probably never would have seen Goldberg in the WWE, which... I'm okay with. And I wouldn't have to worry about Vince McMahon ruining the NWO. Although I have to admit, all things considered, Rock vs. Hogan was still pretty good. Okay, there was a lot of bad that came about Vince McMahon buying WCW, but there was still a lot of good things. I mean, we got Ric Flair back in the company, and if this had anything to do with the ECW purchase, well, that means we also got Rob Van Dam in WWE as well. And just think of all the other hypotheticals. No Rey Mysterio in the WWE. So ultimately, what I'm saying is it's not a black and white scenario. Sure, there's some bad things that happen at a WWE. WWF buying WCW, but there are some good things as well. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite aspects of WWF buying the WCW and what would be different if they never did. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and click the thumbs up to give me a like and share this video with your friends. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please go ahead and do that because I really do appreciate it, and don't forget to check me out on Patreon.com. Thanks again for watching, Dave Knows.